Singapore Airways. We'll figure this out as we go. Singapore Airways to Frank. Very late. Frank is working or not? Tell them the airplane, which was again Delta. And Frank, when they said all the luggage was on, we came to Moscow. But at least three of us were missing one piece of luggage. So we don't know if we went to Singapore or if it's still in Frank. Or for that matter, we made it off the Orlando to New York flight. Only one Delta flight each day in Frank to Moscow. Yes, and it's Delta Flight 20, and it comes in if it's not delayed at 545. That's why we're going to wait at least that long. So we filled this out, and there's a telephone number right here. Yes, yeah. so this telephone number could together with an airport. Why those people are there, I have no idea. But they're just normal Russian people. And the Inuit people that live out there that are missing most of their fingers from frostbite, I want to go visit them. Hmm. Like, that guy's only got four fingers. He's only got three. Right, Hi, so. Bill. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, start start pairing up. The airplane is going to uh, make a pass at 500 feet for you guys with cypresses. We should get an altimeter setting from the ground. You can set your cypress to fire <laughs> at a drop zone 500 feet lower. That'll be an oh. open open door pass. So you can use them. It was done successfully last year. Don't set the things. We're going to take off from Hatinga, pressurize the airplane, fly to 35,000 feet, go down and depressurize and fly around low for a while. So don't do anything with your Cypress. And remember, if your Cypress does fire, you can't jump. So make that the decision whether to turn the thing on or not. All right? I'm not, I'm not going to, even though this is a jump where you really need it. <laughs> altimeters work. Everyone reported their altimeter didn't freeze. So if you're up there looking at the ground, well, I tell you, altitude's impossible to tell. 500 feet, 5,000 feet look the same. I have a bunch of pictures of the pole to show you what the hazards are that you might see. One thing to keep in mind is the sun angle is 14 degrees above the horizon. So something about this tall casts a shadow three times as tall as it is. So stuff will look really big and you'll get there and it isn't. You just basically have two features, leads. A lead is open water and it looks very dark. All right. Then you have frozen over ice where the permafrost snow is blown away and it looks blue and everything else is white. And as you come up to a lead, you'll learn the difference between a lead and a pressure ridge. The pressure ridge is pieces of ice. A lead, when the ice separates, will take this two foot stuff of white and it'll bound it up like this and it'll have sharp, clean, defined edges. And if you step in that, you're going swimming. All right. They won't support you. I've got pictures of both leads, open water, and pressure ridges for you to look at. But from the air, everything looks pretty big because of the long shadows. So depth perception like night jumping? No, no, it's much, much better. Once you're, once you're right down to the ground, there's no trouble at all landing. All right? The pressure ridges are not slippery. The ice is extremely cold and very, very hard. Right? The only thing you have to worry about for is a lead. And you should, of course, look before you jump, or before you land, to see if there's nothing between you and there. Remember, the sun is just circling us. It's not coming up. So at 500 feet, you're five miles out. All right, you've got two clues. You've got wind direction and where the sun is to find your way back. Because once you land, you can't see anything to the next pressure ridge. That's it. There's no landmarks at all. So you better know where you're going. <coughs> Do we have smoke on the ground? Last year, Sergey uh, gave all of us flares. It will be smoke. And the smoke hopefully will be blowing up. And that should help you find the drop zone. You're going out of a jet, you know, 150, 200 miles an hour. You don't get to the door and say, are you guys ready? Because you just gone a mile, all right? <laughs> when, the, when the buzzer goes off, you go. They're not going to let you spot no matter how hard you try. They won't slow the airplane below 150 knots. And if you give them too much grief, they'll speed it up to 200. How many passes? All right, well, at least have five passes, I believe. Uh, that's what I want to talk to Sergey about. We'll be that depends on fuel, how much cargo they're dropping. I don't know. So we Last year, we did three cargo passes at 1,000 feet. They put all our food out in white parachutes and 35 knot winds. <laughs> and we never found the food. <laughs> I'll wait there. There. <laughs> you know, what do you say about altimeters? Well, altimeters, you also can set your altimeters at this 500 foot pass. Okay. okay. It should be calibrated. There'll be, our ground crew is there, according to Sergey, on the pole. All right. And radio communication, he was a little iffy about, but that's okay because it's iffy. And they should be giving us weather reports. But as we come over, we'll have a known altitude. They'll give us an altimeter setting from the ground. You can set your altimeters at that point. But I'm saying pretty much you can trust your altimeters. I've got some 50 below zero lubricant for your three ring releases. So you should see me in Hatinga. All right, we'll wipe it down, huh? You got some, did you? Yes. Yeah, and I had, I had another, I found another kind. 
Right. My kind isn't labeled at 50 below, but the company claims it is. Alan Silver sent me the stuff that's labeled at 50 below. Is it silicon? Yes, it's silicon. <laughs> what? I got silicon grease. The wind, the wind will be out of the south. I will still be smoking. That's the only thing. Good show, Bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find the temperature at the pole. It's minus 87 until the sun comes up, which was last week. And with the end of April, it'll be, it'll be just above zero, just below zero. Right now, it should be minus 25 this time of day. Uh, the ice starts cracking up really bad on the 25th. So we've got to get out of there before then. Right. Um, I'm just going to, while we, we're not doing anything yet, are we? We're all watching yeah, you. Yeah. Watching you, Bill. I'm just going to choose a couple of pictures. We'll use this one. This will show pressure ridges. You want to land, of course, if this wind is blowing, just downwind of a pressure ridge. So this picture here shows the first crack that comes. When the pole breaks loose from the Siberian Islands, which are further than it is in Greenland, it gets torqued and sends a massive crack across. That's probably already happened this year. And look at the pressure ridges. So I'll send this picture in this direction. When the ice blows, this is a piece of polar ice cap showing the blue ice and that two foot of soft packed or hard packed snow on top. Blue ice you can walk all over, all right? So I'll show you that one. You stay away from that. Yeah. But no, I'm just not really showing you anything to stay away from yet. The first time I was there, it was a mile to the nearest pressure ridge. Okay? This is a pressure ridge. These are perfectly safe to walk on. You see what they are? Ice covered with a little bit of snow. I'll pass them around. This picture with the Christmas card is a pressure ridge. That's what you'll have to deal with walking over. Here's a close-up of a pressure ridge. All right, solid. They're hard to get over. Don't get dragged into one because it's sharp, hard ice. I'll pass it around. So what you tell us, we're going to have to pretty much land right in the peak route, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the one. You can see in this picture, it looks like mountains under me. All right, nothing is higher than six feet. With the long shadows, they look really big from the air. Everything's very easy to see because of the very black shadows and the very bright snow. Of course, this is what you're waiting for. Don't miss the sight of exit. Exit is wonderful. It looks like the moon. All right, it really does. I'll pass this picture around to show you that you can't tell how high you are with your eyes. I'm at 5,000 feet. I've just released my drove. It is, but it might as well be 500. Is this the plane we're going out of? No, that's not the plane we're going out of. This is where you don't want to land. This is a whole bunch of pressure ridges. I'll pass that one around. And if you look right here, this is the tip of an iceberg, all right? This Norwegian glacial ice, you can see it's green, all right? It rumbled under us and popped up through. How high is that? Well, you can see this iceberg. That's the tallest feature I saw at the pole last year. Bill, what happens if we get blown wide of, of the drop zone? Are we going to be able to see our way back? or? Uh, well, what you're going to need to do is look for smoke. I want you to notice when you're under canopy where the sun is and where the drop zone is. Because if the sun's here and the drop zone's there, you're just going to walk this way with the sun behind you. The sun will rotate, so start thinking about that. This is our pilot going swimming. This is a dangerous area. You can see the two, I'm going to call it permafrost. It's just two, uh, two feet of ice. It's buckled upward slightly, all right? And if you walk on that, you may fall in. So when you're coming back and you see those little things, all right, the smooth corners and, and white snow, you try to avoid them. And this is just an overall view showing that there's not much. The nearest tree is 2,500 miles, same with power lines. So, <laughs> the, guy, the naked guy swimming, all right, this is what you have to watch out for. This thing opened about six feet wide within three hours, and it was 50 feet from our tent. That's when I got nervous last year. Yeah, watch out for them. I'm going to pass everything in the same direction. Just an overall view of what you have to look out for. It's an adventure. I am told that two inches of sea ice is sufficient to walk on. As a matter of fact, when that thing throws, the Russians are out there trampolining it. The water is 14,000 feet deep. 
But the water is much warmer than the air. Until you get out. Until you get out. <laughs> Time of useful consciousness is about one minute in the water, so you have to get out fast. Yes. Everybody, wear your bathing suits under your suit because if there's no wind, we'll take a bathing suit shot. There has to be no wind. Bill, I didn't bring my tea bag. Do we have some kind of exit? I wore my tiger pants. Yeah, I wanted to get together and see and have you guys break up in groups. We have 10 hours in Hatchinga, we can do that. We're being split up this morning. Which again, I'm against. <laughs> but, uh, Don't hide it, Bill. Yeah, I won't. <laughs> I don't want the rest of you guys bitching and moaning like I am about my suit, about your damn free bag, okay? <laughs> oh, I think I have my passport back. That's good news. <laughs> I'm sitting here and awaiting future, uh, further instructions. Is Mikhail or, or Sergey here? Yeah. Mikhail's behind you. All right. What, oh, you're giving out passports. Yes. Why don't you call names and come get your passports, guys? <laughs> if anyone hasn't seen pictures, put them right back here when you. The headwind. But we shouldn't have to go more than 20, 25 people to pass. Don't believe me. If you're touching someone when you jump, it'll be 50 yard separation. All right. And if you hold on to someone, you'll have a broken arm. Okay. No chunks out the door. This is like, well, you can try if you want. This is like Hurricane Andrew outside. Serious yeah, speed. Is it uh, worse than the... Uh, it's exactly the same as the Jetta Quincy. Same? All right. Same as the Jetta Quincy. Piece of cake. It's not going to get you. I'm just saying that it's a little surprising if you've only jumped in on it. Where's the door? Where's the door? It's a tailgate. If you stand eight wide in the tailgate. The jet's roughly the size of this lobby, okay? <laughs> no, cameras won't break your necks. I've jumped several times, and once I had my tandem passenger pulled out to here, the other time I had her slammed into my chest so hard it knocked my breath out. I've seen some Russians jump out and just smile and surf the waves, get up higher than the airplane. Most everyone else goes out and goes <laughs> as, as on C-130s, at the edge of the tailgate, you'll go like this, and in the middle of the tailgate, you'll go like this, okay? So avoid the edges of the tailgate, because it's rolling like this. So a lot of you jump jets. And I watched two guys go like this, and the back guy jumped a little up. The other guy dove down, and the, and the lower guy went this way, and the guy this way. But often you watch guys jump off, and they're higher than you and instantly. I like it's it. going like this. So if you just jump off and do a big sail like this, you get right up toward the tail of the airplane, looking back in. Cool. Okay. Cool. Cracking hey. up. Cracking <laughs> up. That was like yeah. a jet. You could yeah. go out the door. Well, and jet. Yeah. Are we still calling passports? <laughs> Italians? <laughs> Italy, Deutschland, and Belgium. All right. Then, Mikkel, uh, what is the schedule? Is the air show still on? Yeah. In this rain, okay. Yeah. Are you going to the air show or are you going to stay with us? The group is now split into two pieces. We need two interpreters. Although we have. I prefer to stay. Okay. Okay. All right, now, we have to, I need to know when we're getting back to from the air show and when we're going to meet. I, we know right now that we're going to meet here at 8 o'clock tonight. Seven. 7 o'clock tonight, because we're going to leave on a bus at 8 o'clock. We'll be going for two tonight. <laughs> As far as I know, we are going tonight. The latest word is that the schedule is here at 7 o'clock tonight. Get on the bus and get out of here by 8 o'clock tonight and you drive. Now, once we start moving, you guys had better eat because we're going to drive two hours in the bus out into the countryside, minimum. Then we're going to have to load this airplane in the dark. Right? Then we're going to fly five hours in the airplane. There is, a, there is a restroom, but I'm not going to tell anyone where it is unless someone lends me good, warm stuff. We <laughs> can work something out, Bill, I promise. <laughs> However, the, uh, if you have just any tendency to think that you're going to have diarrhea, take a Lamotol or an Imodium before we get there. All right? The bathroom is extremely limited. I mean, everybody gets one pee and it'll overflow. Okay? Whether those portable urinals or plastic bags will help. How should we dress for the airplane? Is it going to be now, here's what you can do in the airplane. The airplane, we won't get it too warm, but what, what you're going to do in this airplane, just dress like this. 
Uh, you're going to go to Siberia. The airplane will park 100 feet from the door of the hotel. It will be cold there. It will be minus 10 or so. Could be windy and snowy. Uh, but just dress just like I am with a heavy jacket and gloves and a hat. Because you'll have to. It's, it's bitter cold there. And you're going to have to get to the hotel. Don't put your polar suits on by any means. And, you know, a lot of us, we got given these little slippers on the airline on the way over, which is pretty nice, because when we're going to the pole, you'll wear your polar suit, take off your boots, take off your jacket, hats and gloves, and walk around in your stocking feet or slippers, because you've got three hours there and it's much too hot in this stuff. But you can't, uh, you can't take any extra shoes because they're going to be in the airplane. The airplane may come back to Hataga and we may get your shoes back. Some little slippers or an extra pair of socks. Bottom, the bottom of the floor are, are dirty, you know. You know. So slippers are there are seats. There are no seats in the aircraft. There are seats in the airplane. They're fold-out plastic seats along the sides. So we'll have a space to put all of our gear on. I mean, we can move around yeah, a little bit. Uh, I don't know how much cargo they're carrying. No, no. I mean, we're not just generally the only people that give revenue to this airplane. Uh, last time we brought back ten caribou carcasses stripped. They're all around the center of the airplane, and we were worried worried they'd start smelling, but they didn't. And loaded them in Moscow. They're still frozen. So I don't know what's going to be in the airplane. <laughs> cargo netted area down the center to put all the gear in. Your okay. seats down the side. <laughs> right. And you can go up. I got uh, 30 minutes flying it last time. It made everybody kind of nervous. You know? But this is our charter, so if you want to fly a jumbo jet, here's your chance. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You get up there and you're going along, and everybody's doing really good. And the pilot says, I still got the autopilot on here. <laughs> so you get the idea. <laughs> Kevin wants to try this. How are we getting off the plane? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I understand the ICE airport is established. Sergey didn't tell me how far it was from the airport. So we're going to get off the pole in an MIA helicopter. We're going to fly for 20, 30, 40 minutes in the helicopter to the ICE airport. And then we're getting on an Antonov 74 or Antonov 26. The 26 is like a buffalo. It's a twin engine turboprop, carries 25 people. The 74 is a jet. That's what I want. <laughs> of course, I don't know if it's ever been done before, so maybe I'll go on the second load of the jet. <laughs> They've scraped uh, supposedly a 50-foot wide strip. That white stuff is removed down to ice and uh, by a kilometer long. Mm. These airplanes have skis or wheels? Wheels. This is all conventional stuff. The trouble with the ski airplanes is they generally don't have the range. See, what happened, the helicopter, we we're going to have to do two refueling stations. And the price went up to $240,000. And that's when I just about canceled the expedition. So now we found the fixed wing stuff. Then the helicopter people came back and said, we'll do it for 100 grand, we'll do it. And then there was a big war, and I think Sergei's won the war. I bet it on Sergei instead of General Almonton, who's general of the Air Force here. <laughs> but General Almonton's in charge of rescue. He's not pissed at me, he's pissed at Sergei, okay? <laughs> not at all. They updated some of the Germans, though. We heard last time. Huh? The Germans are going to buy a different yeah. routing. Germans, <laughs> Germans I, I really can't tell you anything about. I know that they are here today, and they're going to Hakenga today. And I don't know if they're going in General Amelkin's airplanes or, or this, this airplane. <coughs> Quite frankly, I don't think there's room for 150 with all our gear and a bunch of cargo in this airplane. But we probably will never see them. It's possible we'll never see them. The Germans want to do 10 or 12 practice jumps at Sergei, at, uh, at Hattinga. Talking about a pissed off group, they've got 70 people, they're going to bump 20. All right? Yeah, they're going to bump 20. Then they're going to go to the pole and try a 50-way, which they won't get. So they're going to be in a pole pissing and moaning, you know? <laughs> You know, this is what I want to do in my jump to the North Pole. <laughs> now I want to look at the North Pole. The best thing you can do is put one or two people in front of you and go, wow, it's neat. No serious argument. I can't hear you. I'm up high. No, I, have, I don't think the Germans have made a 50-way in Germany, and they're going to try it in all this gear at the pole. Well, that's not a pool interesting. We'll see. OK, so back here at 7? Back here at 7 is the best I can say. Now, there's a bunch going to the air show. Everyone who isn't going to the air show, why don't you stay right here? We'll get Michael, and we'll go to the Kremlin. Uh, before you... This is the lobby we're meeting in at 7 o'clock tonight. Yeah, okay. Do we have to do anything about checking out of gear? <coughs> on Bill, wait a second, time out. That I can't answer. Sergey will tell us that if he shows up. Rather than have us drag all of our luggage, why can't we meet at the other lobby over there? Well, all right. Now, if everybody is here, I'll make that decision. But I make sure everybody's here because we couldn't tell. See, everyone checked in at different times, and there's more than two lobbies. And if we say lobby over mm -hmm. there, you might okay. be at two yeah, places. Okay. Meet right here. Right here. Uh, okay. Okay. Over there is closer. Okay. Right here, everybody knows where it is. Okay. So that was the choice. 
Okay. You may have to make two trips. That's fine. Uh, how about leaving stuff? You were 